What's up guys back with more videos for you and this video is coming from District 196 this young young man right here his name is Brad Taylor and I guess he's exposing what it's like to be in some of these schools pushing woke stuff you know older people like me I'm 26 we far removed from this you know I haven't been in college since I haven't even been in college for the since what 20 I mean yeah like 2017 so I, I've been out of the school system for a long time so all we can do is if we know some if we know younger kids that are in school, we can get it from them or watching videos like this. But before we get in the video, two announcements. One, I want to say a shout out to Officer Tatum because I got this clip from him. I didn't watch it. I didn't watch his video, but I seen it. I watched maybe like, you know, 10, 15 seconds of this kid talking. I was like, OK, let me react to this. And two, I feel like my numbers been dropping. I'm not complaining. You know what I'm saying? It's, the, it's YouTube. It's the algorithm. But for me, just to help me out a bit, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification button. So every time I drop a video, you know it's live. But without further ado, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe while you're watching the video and join with me. Now let's get into it. Hi, my name is Brad Taylor, and I just finished my freshman year at RHS. Um, I've been a part of District 196 schools now for 10 years, and I'm going to give you a glimpse today of what's actually going on inside these schools. Um, despite the board's attempt to deny it, District 196 schools are quickly becoming a place where promoting activism is actually more important than promoting education. I'll take, you, I'll take you back to my first day at RHS this fall. The principal came out and gave us a heartfelt speech about equality and standing together. Um, he began to list countless races, such as Latino, Asian, expressing how much they matter and how important they are. But never once did he mention a race or identity that reflects me or half the kids that were in the class. Mm. Now, members of the board, I know you haven't been to school in a while, and I know most of the people, I know none of you, or most of you, don't have any kids left in the school district. I literally just was talking about that. <laughs> I know none of you, or most of you, don't have any kids left in the school district. Um, but you must admit how uncomfortable it will be to be characterized just by your skin color on the first day of school, and be thought that you were wrong just because of your skin color. So I'll never forget the look one of my friends gave me, from across the room as we were sitting there listening to this blatant bias being expressed in the so-called equity statement by the leader of our school. To be clear, I don't need you to tell me that I matter, but hearing the condolences given to other races and leaving just one race out, it inevitably you'll start to feel like you've done something wrong. And in our principal's attempt to unify us, he instead created unwarranted boundaries and barriers between his students, pitting us against each other based on characteristics that we can't control. In another separate instance, I was told that writing all lives matter on the whiteboard was political and could be seen as offensive. When I questioned the teacher after class, she told me that she didn't have an answer and she just had to erase it, and it was quickly erased. Mm. There are political signs all over RHS specific, about specific races that matter, specific sexual orientations that matter, and specific perspectives that matter. But when I questioned the RHS administration about how these signs were political, they told me that they were supporting human rights. So when I questioned why the equity statement couldn't represent all students, they told me that to even ask that question was outlandish and offensive. See, and now that now that's crazy. You know what I mean? Like this and shout out to shout out to this young man, because, you know, it takes I couldn't imagine. I mean, well, I'm not white. Right. But I couldn't imagine, you know, I struggled with like uh, I struggled with, you know, self-confidence issues, public speaking and things like that. Growing up, I got better at it in college, but I. But I couldn't imagine being in being in what I guess he's a sophomore now in high school and, and standing up and giving a speech like this. This must be must be a pretty bright kid, a pretty smart kid. I bet he's doing good in school and everything. But it's sad. It's sad that they they pin kids against each other like this. I don't I don't know what I don't know what the incentive is for these schools to be to be pushing this this woke stuff. But instead of saying that black lives matter or minorities matter, unify the kids. It should be every student in that whole school matters. You know what I mean? It's almost like it's almost like the pendulum has swung. Right now, black people who comment on how badly we've been treated our time here. All right, cool. You warranted to say whatever you want. Me personally, I don't really harp on that. I know the history, but I don't really harp on it. Right. But it's almost like the pendulum has swung now where white people, while, they're, while, while they are still the, min, uh, still the majority, you know, while they still, while, while, you know, white people are still, it's mostly white people at the, at the tops of big corporations and all that. White people winning, cool, not all, but a lot of them are. 
But it seems like nowadays you get you get crap just for being a white person. Almost the same as almost the same as as how it was when you when you were uh, back in the day, what it was like to be black. Now, I'm not saying that it's the same thing. Right. Because white people aren't slaves in this country. White people can go wherever they want. But. To have to have to even to even say that you love your real race as a white person or to say that you love white people or that all lives matter or white people aren't bad. Like you get you get um, you know, you get ostracized for that type of stuff. It's like people don't want to hear that for whatever reason, but he can't help it. He can't help the way he was born. You know what I'm saying? Like, why should he pay for the sins of the sins of his of his ancestors? You know what I'm saying? This kid was born. This kid was probably born in the in the mid 2000s. He don't got nothing to do with racism or inequality or none of this stuff. You know, I just think it's ridiculous. You know, you got grown grown ass adults going, uh, you know, looking at kids like this and saying, "Ah, oh, shut up! You got privilege. You 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 shouldn't even deserve. You don't even deserve to speak." And all type of crazy stuff like that, man. Shout out to this kid, bro. And they, when I asked why that was, they told me, quote, whites have a pretty good situation right now, unquote. And that's coming from the school. Like, that's coming from a school. Whites have a pretty good situation right now. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's a lot of black people that don't think this type of stuff is serious, that don't think this type of stuff is happening. But hey, it's, it's pressure on, it's pressure, it's pressure on kids it's pressure on these on these little white kids, you know what I'm saying? Growing up being white and hearing things like hearing things like your ancestors are bad, your people are bad, you got to pay for what they did. Like I couldn't imagine growing up like that. Growing up growing up black ain't easy either, but I never got nothing. I can't remember ever hearing no no stuff like that being told to me, especially not in school. So is that not racism? Disregarding my question merely because of the color of my skin? To be honest, after enduring a year of the people in charge telling me that I'm a racist and I'm privileged and pointing out our irreversible differences, I've never noticed race more. And it's becoming the first thing I notice when I meet someone, which has never before been the case. <clears throat> RHS administration confidently told me that RHS students and staff are happy with their equity statement. But from the ex my experience in talking with other students, this is not the case. I know many kids who disagree with their teachers, but they're too scared to stand up because they're worried that their grades will be docked and their learning experience will be affected. My honors government teacher, I'm not going to say his name, but he's mentioned that Democrats care more about all people while Republicans only care about themselves. And he's also inferred to us that socialism is better than democracy. He even had. A and just another I know I've been stopping and, <coughs> and ranting a lot, but politics don't even belong in the schools. Politics from the top down, like trying to push kids to be a, a certain push kids to be left or right that shouldn't even be allowed in school like i don't even i don't care if you're on the right or the left you shouldn't be pushing ki pushing kids like that give kids information teach them about the left teach them about the right teach them about politics but take your own bias out of this a statue he had a statue of a socialist leader in his classroom um i have been i've been told by a lot of kids that they just stay silent and adjust their schoolwork to reflect an acceptable opinion to secure a good grade I've been approached by multiple teachers who have told me in private that they just want to say that they agree with me and they support me standing up, but they can't say it in front of the class for fear of being disciplined by the administration in some way or losing their jobs. There is clearly only one way to think in this district, and that is that they are teaching their kids to shut up if they don't agree. Now, members of the board, I want you to take a good look at yourselves in the mirror tonight and ask, are you really standing up for the equality of all people, or are you just pushing a damaging political ideology um, on, on our students? <coughs> A fellow coworker at my job, who by the way is of color, discreetly told me that the schools seem to be pushing a very leftist agenda in class. This proved that not everyone is happy with your school, and not everyone who isn't happy is white. Now, due to all these instances I've mentioned, and many more that I can't fit in this five minute speech, I have decided to leave this district and continue school on a private Christian school online. And and there will be sacrifices, and I will not get to walk in the graduation ceremony or attend milestones at RHS, but I will be able to learn in an environment that is not intent on punishing me daily for my skin color and political views. Now, regardless of how you take my speech, whether you just shrug it off as malarkey or Fox News talking points, <laughs> I encourage you to think about it, because someday I'm going to be a leader. I may be the president, a governor, or just a professional golfer, 
but I will never stop believing that everybody has value, no matter their skin color or personal beliefs. And it's a shame that you're not going to be able to say that I was an alumni of RHS in District 196. Thank you. Yo, I just want to say shout out to that kid. You know, like he said, don't hear his speech and just dismiss it as Fox talking points or BS. This is his actual life. You know what I'm saying? And your job as a school administrator is to take care of all the kids. It's not to take care of the color kids and not the white kids. Just lead them out to drive because they got a better situation. You know what I'm saying? You should make every every all kids should feel should feel inclusive at a school. <clears throat> you know, and like I said, just salute to him because what he's doing, what he did is a form of what reaction channels like mine are doing, which is just speaking up and putting some putting some light on 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 issues that are controversial that that you get fired for speaking, you know what I'm saying? Like that's why someone that might be it might be someone who works at a big corporation one day that ends up watching my videos, right? But he can't he can't openly speak out like this like I can because I don't work for a big corporation. I don't got to worry about getting fired. The only thing I have to worry about is my YouTube channel getting taken down. But other than that, I'm fine. You know what I'm saying? So just salute to this kid for speaking up and more people need to need to do things like this. You know, if you are in school, let your teachers know. You know, let your parents know. Let the board know. All, all that, man. I, I, uh, I just that 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 was that was powerful. Powerful speech from a young man. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe on the way out the door. Let me know what you want to see next in the comments below. Until next time, I'm out of here, guys. Peace.